Hello, my name is Michelle Daniels. I'm your e-facilitator. I'm an educator, speaker. Most of all, I'm a woman of God. Thank you for joining me for the Revelation of Jesus Christ, part four. Uh, we are going to continue in the book of Revelation, and we're also going to be connecting the book of Daniel, um, chapter number seven, uh, with... Uh, and also chapter uh, Daniel chapter 2 um, with the book of Revelation starting with chapter 13. In, in Daniel 7, the prophet records a night vision that God gives him concerning the four world empires symbolized as four beasts in Daniel 7 verse 18. The four empires are the same as the Nebuchadnezzar's dream that he that he saw in the book of Daniel chapter 2. Although the dreams uh, they are pictured in, as various metals in a statue, Daniel's vision assures us that the world's empires have certain amount of authority for a certain length of time, but they will all pass away and the holy city of the Most High God will receive the kingdom and the possessors of it forever. Yes, I said forever. So Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night and beheld the four winds of the heaven stoved upon the great sea. And the four great beasts came out of the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. And I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon its feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it writhed up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth, of it between its teeth, and they said thus to, unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which was upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also ha had four heads and dominion was given to it. After this I saw the, the night's visions and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth and it devoured and broke into pieces and stamped the residue with its feet and it was diverse from the, from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, they came among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in the horn were eyes, like eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. This is Daniel chapter 7, verses 2 through 8. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. That's in Daniel 7, verse 21. And the ten horns out of its kingdom are ten kings that will rise and shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue the three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time, and times, and the dividing of time. That's Daniel chapter 7, verses 24 through 25. So now, turn in your Bibles to the Revelation chapter 13. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. And it had ten horns and seven heads, 
and ten crowns on its horn, and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. People worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast, and he also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemy and to exercise authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power to wage war against the holy people, against God's holy people and to conquer them. It was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. All those names have not been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Whoever hears, let them hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword they will be killed. This calls for patience, endurance, and faithfulness on the part of God's people. Then I saw a second beast coming up out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority over the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound would be healed. So we know that the first beast that had the that we saw that had the seven heads and the ten crowns, this is the Antichrist. And now we see the second beast, and this is the false prophet. Yes, then I saw the second beast coming up out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all authority over the first beast and over and the first beast on its behalf made the earth and all its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed and it performed great signs and caused fire to come down from heaven to the earth to in full view of the people because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive the mark of their, on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast and the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for its number is the number of man. That number is 666. Now we know that there's going to be a great fall of Babylon, but we'll go into that more on the next week. Revelation chapter 14. The Lamb 
and the 144,000. Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their forehead. And I heard a sound from heaven, like a roaring of a rushing waters, and like a loud pearl of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and before the 24 elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they remain virgins. They followed the lamb everywhere he goes. They were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruit to God and the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouth. They are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and it had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the springs of the water. A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink, maddening wine of her adulteries. A third angel appeared. With a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and its image and receive the mark on their forehead or on their hands, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented, tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and the lamb. The smoke of the torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image. For anyone who receives the mark of its name, this calls for patience and endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head, and with a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel appeared. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because it is time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who has he who was seated on the seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he too had a sharp sickle still another angel had char charge of the fire came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grape from the earth's vine because its grapes are ripe the angel swung his sickle on the earth gathered its grape and threw them into a great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside of the city, and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horse's bridle 
for a distance of 1,600 strides. Revelation 15. I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with seven last plagues, last because with them God's wrath is completed. I saw what looked like a sea of glass glowing with fire and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name. They held their harps given to them by God and they sang of God's servant Moses and of the Lamb great and marvelous are your deeds Lord God Almighty just and true your ways King of the nations who will not fear you Lord and bring glory to your name for you alone are holy all nations come and worship before you for your righteous acts have been revealed. After this I look and I saw in heaven a temple, that is the tabernacle of the covenant, and it was open, and out of the temple came seven angels with seven plagues. They were dressed in clean shining linen and wore gold sash around their chest. Then one with the of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven gold bowls filled with the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were complete. Revelation 16. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying, to the seventh angel, go pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. And the first angel went and poured out its bowl on the land and ugly fester sores brought out on the people who had mark of the beast and worshiped his image. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea and it turned into blood like that of a dead person and everything in the sea died. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of the water, and they became blood. And then I heard the angel in charge of the water say, You are just in these judgments, O Holy One. You are and who were, for they have shed the blood of your holy people and your prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar respond, Yes, Lord, oh, God, yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out the bowl on the sun, and the sun was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were seared by the intense heat, and they cursed the name of God, who had control over the plagues, but they refused to repent and glorify him. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in agony and cursed God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, but they refused to repent of what God had done. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are demonic spirits that perform signs, and they go out into the kings of the whole earth to gather them for battle on the great day of God Almighty. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awoke and remains clothed, so you are not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. Then they gathered the kings together to a place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. 
the seven angels poured out his bowl into the air. And out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. Then there was flashes of lightning, rumbling, pearls of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake has ever occurred since mankind has been on earth. So tremendous was this quake. The great city split into three parts, and the city of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon, Babylon the Great, and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds, fell on people, and they crushed them. God, on account of the plague of hell, because the plague was so terrible. Yes, they cursed God on the account of the plague of the hell because the plague was so terrible. All right, we're gonna stop right here at the end of chapter 16 in the book of Revelation. I wanna thank you for watching this video. Should you have any questions, concerning chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16, please go to my website, youre-facilitator.com. That's youre-facilitator.com and leave your questions. You can drop them in the chat box or you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and put them in the comment section and leave your name, your email, and your questions and I will answered them at my earliest convenience. I want to thank you again for watching. Please like and share this video with your friends and tell everyone to join me on Friday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for e-Bible study. Again, my name is Michelle Daniels. I want to speak blessings and peace to each and every one of you.